Can you imagine living in a country where you can find an entire district dedicated to erotic entertainment and where you can decide when you die? This is the dark side of the Netherlands. The history of the Netherlands dates back to the 4th century when the Romans ruled over the territory. As the Roman Empire got weaker, the Franks or the Charlemagne Empire took over in the 5th until the 9th century. After the Charlemagne Empire, the Dutch were divided into smaller states. Then Charles of Habsburg granted the entire Netherlands territory to the King of Spain or his son, Philip II in 1555. The Dutch revolted against the dynasty, which led to the Treaty of Munster in 1648 signifying their independence for Spanish rule. The country was also invaded by Napoleon's forces in the 18th century but regained its independence in the early 19th century. After a difficult period during World War II, the Netherlands rebuilt and later became a member of the European Union as well as the most developed and wealthiest countries in the world. Despite its small size, the Netherlands' GDP was $1.03 trillion in 2022, with a GDP per capita of €53,200 or US dollars This puts them in fourth position with the European Union. One of the most popular areas in its capital is the Red Light District, Devalen. It has been around since the 1300s, where you'll find hypnotizing red lights by the canal side. The area has as much as 20 million tourists per year. Most nights, the streets are so packed that you can barely move. Devalen is a mix of history and entertainment, where you can find both erotic shops and historic museums on the same street. And of course, you can find the oldest profession in the world here as well. But if you're planning on visiting the area, you should be aware of its unwritten rules. Some of those rules are no photos allowed as privacy matters. Don't disturb if a curtain is closed on a window because that means the worker already has a client. And a blue light means transsexual sex worker. Another unique attraction in Devalen is its sex museum. If you ever wanted to learn more about intercourse, you don't need to attend classes. You can simply visit this museum. It's filled with awe-inspiring information on the erotic art, complete with wax figures and audio tours. Although it seems like most of the red light district is fun and games, there's still a dark side to Devalen. According to UNHCR, there are still cases of human trafficking and forced labor in the establishments. These cases can amount to 100 to 200 incidents per year. Thankfully, the government is enforcing more regulations to counteract this, such as imprisonment for clients who fail to report when they notice that a woman is forced into working there. Believe it or not, Around a third of the Netherlands is sitting below sea level, which explains the country's name, which means low country. There's a saying that goes, God created Earth, the Dutch created the Netherlands. Many have applauded the country's ingenuity in building its cities on less than favorable land. There's even plenty of hydroengineering techniques to build their city on top of the ocean, such as building a wall, dams, windmills, and canals. But all these strategies are not without its risks. For example, houses across the country have been collapsing. Research even estimated 1 million houses could collapse within the next 30 years. Amsterdam is particularly vulnerable, and the city already has cracks and sinkholes alongside its waterways. The country is facing a dire future due to the rising sea levels. Most of its important parts, Amsterdam, Rotterdam, The Hague, and Utrecht, are located in the country's low altitude west side. At this point, the government has created a plan to identify which parts of the Netherlands should be retained and which should be given back to the sea to save the rest. That leads to their most preferred eco-friendly method of getting around, riding bicycles. The country has more bicycles than residents, and the infrastructure makes cycling a safe and inviting mode of transportation. One downside to this is the number of road accidents, especially cycling accidents. With a total of 291 people dying due to cycling accidents in 2022, most of the victims were over 50 years old and half of the incidents were caused by collisions with vans or cars. One of the causes is the rising popularity of e-bikes, which makes cycling more accessible to older generations. Another factor is the reluctance to wear helmets. From all incidents of cycling accidents, only 3% of ordinary bike riders and 2% of e-bike riders wore helmets. E-bike users were even more vulnerable because they can go faster than regular ones. Amsterdam is the city of museums. 
But if you're easily scared, you might want to stay away from some of their questionable ones. One in particular is the Torture Museum Amsterdam, located in the busy city center. The Torture Museum gives you a glimpse into medieval horror where human suffering was seen as entertainment. The museum has a collection of torture instruments men used in Europe until the 18th century, and all of them come with life-size human wax figures that demonstrate how these tools were used. Another museum that might give you nightmares is the Amsterdam Dungeon. This unique attraction takes you back to the Netherlands' dark past, from the Spanish Inquisition, the witch hunt in the 16th century, and also the Great Plague that affected most of the world and killed millions. Lastly, Amsterdam is the home to the creepiest museum in the world called the Vrolijk Museum. It has a collection of medieval oddities that were donated by Gerardus Vrolijk, a 19th century professor of botany and anatomy. When Vrolijk was in charge of the maternity ward at a hospital in Amsterdam, he decided to collect the remains of babies with birth defects. Those remains are now preserved and displayed for all to see. Would you like to be the one who decides how and when you die? That's something that most Dutch believe in because euthanasia or assisted killing is living. The Netherlands is even referred to as being a pioneer when it comes to euthanasia. The practice has been legal in the country since 2002 for patients experiencing unbearable suffering with no prospect of improvement, and countries such as Colombia and Australia have followed suit. But this decision comes with plenty of ethical dilemmas, especially when it comes to drawing a limit on when it should be done. One case in the Netherlands is a patient who signed a directive letter when she found out she had dementia. The letter stated that if one day she was unable to recognize any of her family members, she's to be euthanized. When it finally happened, the patient no longer understood her circumstance and had to be restrained before submitting to the fatal injection. Some doctors are now more reluctant to administer euthanasia and have become more rigid due to these consequences. Every country has its dark side but let's also pay attention to the bright side of this beautiful country. Did you know that the Dutch are the tallest people in the world? Some have even dubbed it as the land of giants, with the average height of a Dutch man being 182.5 centimeters and a Dutch woman being 168.7 centimeters. The reason behind this growth isn't just genetic, but also several environmental factors. The Netherlands has a world-leading healthcare system and a voracious appetite for dairy products. Do you want some more proof of the Netherlands' obsession with milk products? They're determined to produce more dairy, so they've decided to create floating farms. Due to their limited land, Dutch people built a floating farm with dairy cows in Rotterdam. Around 40 cows are kept on each floating farm equipped with grass, grains, bran, comfort beds, and robots for automated milking. These floating farms are very environmentally friendly and adaptive so floods are no longer a concern for the dairy farmers. The Netherlands is always a step ahead when it comes to amazing healthcare. A perfect example of this is the world's first dementia-friendly village in Hogwak. This wonderful facility houses over 150 people with severe dementia, accompanied by twice as many healthcare professionals. Unlike other dementia care homes, the village is a more humane and safer way to give patients better lives. Thanks to this village, these people tend to do better psychologically, taking fewer medications and living longer. Another village in the Netherlands looks like it comes straight out of a fairy tale, the tiny Dutch village called Hithorn. In this village without roads, people can only sail around, walk, or cycle. Hithorn has hand-dug canals running throughout the village and small islands that are connected by 176 bridges to the mainland. It's only around 85 minutes from Amsterdam and is considered one of the cleanest cities in the world. Aside from being the land of the giants, the Netherlands is also known as the flower shop of the world. The country represents about 60% of global flower trade and 80% of EU flower exports. If you ever visit the Netherlands, you should visit the Kuikinhof Park, the largest garden in the world with around 800 varieties of tulips. The Netherlands is a country that might be small in size, but never in accomplishments. It managed to grow throughout all the hardships it faced, from creating a safe and healthy environment for its people to being the tallest people in the world. There's always something that we can learn from the ever-evolving Dutch.